What's going on everyone? Nick or Catalyst here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be talking about how you can improve at flying in Battlefield 5. This is the first of two planned guides on vehicles. We'll be discussing tanks at a later date, but today we're going to be focusing on how to become a better pilot. And of course, some of you may be asking, why now for this guide? It's about a year and a half too late. Well, since Battlefield 5 is going to no longer receive developer support after July, I am doing my best to wrap up my guide so those who are new to the game or continue to play the game moving forward have an archive of tips and tricks at their disposal. Now, this guide may be a little bit different than my other guides for a couple of reasons. In the last month or so of playing Battlefield 5, I've begun to play more in vehicles to bide my time and refresh my Battlefield experience. I have about 800 hours total in the game and up until around a month ago 97% of my playtime had been spent as an infantry player and you can imagine that playing nearly 750 hours of infantry at the highest level can get well pretty boring after a while so I set out to learn how to fly and improve in that area of the game with little to no experience at all and after a month of learning and practicing with other friends I'd like to think I've become a pretty decent pilot I'm telling you all of that to tell you this Am I an expert pilot? No, and I'll point you in the right direction after the video is done to an excellent pilot that I recommend you watch if you want the highest tier advice, but with that being said, since you all are here expecting tips to learn how to fly, I think it would be beneficial for me to share with you what I've learned the hard way over the course of the last month of flying experience, and what I did to go from a mediocre pilot to a strong one, so that's what we'll do today. So enough of the disclaimers and explaining, let's get to the useful stuff. Here is what I've learned on how to be a good pilot. The first thing that I learned while flying is that it actually has a lot of similarities to infantry gameplay, especially in how I approach team fights on the ground. I found that when flying, it's very important to trade out kills as a pilot before you go and start farming infantry, despite farming infantry definitely being the more entertaining activity. And unfortunately, not everybody understands that right away. I didn't understand that at first. And even more so when you are playing infantry, it is very difficult to survive an odd number attack while in a plane. So you truthfully need to do your best to keep your teammates up when you can and hope that they will return you the favor because if you lose that initial team dogfight, it's going to be very difficult to regain air superiority. Again, I didn't understand that at first and I ended up getting my teammates and myself killed more than I initially realized. I never thought about it as much, I just kind of left my teammates to do what they wanted to and focused on keeping myself up primarily, worrying about myself, but it's important to note that just by keeping planes off your teammates, it's a pretty good way of keeping yourself up by itself. One of the hardest things to do as a pilot is to analyze the flow of the battle and how things are materializing, and the more practice you get, the more you start to understand what that means. If you're a more experienced pilot, you definitely know that feeling you get when you get into a groove and the game just kind of comes very naturally to you, but for beginners, it's hard to try and find that flow, especially in combination with what's going on around you. The first thing to try and correct that is target prioritization, knowing which targets to go for at what times, and really picking your spots to generate an attack. Generally speaking, you don't want to chase enemy pilots into their base unless you have them at 50% health or less, because if they are competent, they can loop spam you around in their resupply until a friendly plane comes and takes you out. It's much faster and more efficient to engage pilots at mid-map or in your base and to disengage and attack another angle when an enemy pilot is trying to bait you into his base. It's very important to establish air superiority as fast as possible. Enemy pilots that are currently behind a teammate of yours should be your number one concern if you don't have somebody on your tail for reasons I've already talked about. If your teammate goes down, it is going to be a lot more difficult to regain air superiority the longer that kill goes without being traded out. A lot of pilots are very selfish and only focus on getting ground kills, which is why you see a lot of Stukas and Bombers in the vanilla playlist, and that's extremely frustrating to play with as a teammate because you you can be shaking a pilot that snuck up on your tail for a solid two minutes or so and your pilot teammate can be completely unaware or simply not care and focus on trying to bomb ground targets and probably failing at doing so, let's be honest. So please don't be that type of pilot, be mindful that friendly pilots going down makes your job harder too. Use your awareness and help your teammates out. 
I also found that you should definitely keep an eye on your tail as much as humanly possible because if an enemy plane is able to sneak up on you and land shots without you knowing he's there, in most cases you are probably going to get shot down if a teammate doesn't intervene. And of course, this is dependent on the skill of the pilot, but in most cases, if they land shots and you are taken completely by surprise, you're going to go down. So if you see somebody that looks like they're going to engage you from behind, you should go on the offensive side of things and start your turn early to try and close the distance between you both but at an angle that's more advantageous to you and where you can get shots on him or attempt to get behind him. Another lesson I learned the hard way when beginning to fly was don't play chicken with the AA gun. Now obviously they may this may be a bit of an obvious tip but there were times where I thought I would be able to shoot the guy off the AA and flew straight at him and I ended up getting myself killed and you could have gotten away with that in previous titles which is why I tried it so much initially but in Battlefield 5 the range on the AA guns are absolutely ridiculous I think they're like 700 meters or something like that and they can mess you up it's better to disengage loop back and then kill him from a different angle Speaking of AA, one of the most useful things that you can learn that doesn't involve reading and reacting to the battle around you is memorizing AA locations on the map. This also will help you develop your map flow so you know where to fly on certain sectors of the map and areas that you need to have a heightened sense of awareness. Memorizing the locations will also make it easier for you to take out the AA guns when they are active since admittedly they are very hard to see due to Battlefield 5's lack of visibility and as I said earlier, you don't want to nosedive trying to spot them and end up playing chicken with the AA. When you're heading back to the resupply station, if you start to repair before you cross through the gate or resupply symbol or whatever have you, the repair will count towards restoring your overall health instead of repairing the health that you have left, which will be much faster than beginning your repair as soon as you pass through the gate. Also, if you are forced to flee back to your base before you can drop both your bombs or rockets, if you have them still equipped, deplete the rest of your ordnance before you pass through the resupply gate. Battlefield 5 is a little bit funky with how the resupply works, and this will prevent having to reload in the middle of combat because for instance if you don't drop your second bomb or you don't fire off the rest of your rockets before you resupply the game will treat you as only having those rockets available even though you did go back and resupply so the game will only allow you to drop one bomb before you have a cooldown even though you're supposed to have two and instead of allowing you to drop both in one go if you just depleted your ordnance. It was a little bit confusing, it's a little bit wonky with how that works, but if you're going to have to go back and resupply and you've used some of your rockets or bomb, just deplete the rest, you're going to get them back anyway. Speaking of dropping bombs, try not to drop both your bombs at the same time if you can help it. In my opinion, you are better off to target clumps or single out infantry and use one bomb instead of going for the killed feed buster bomb drop. Unless you have the elevation, the angle, and the velocity to drop two bombs in an accurate manner, just drop one so you spend more time in the battle, you get more chances, and you spend less time going back to your resupply station. Now, how about actually flying? Well, this video isn't going to go into excruciating detail with maneuvers for you to do. Azura Productions has a pretty good video on that. You should definitely check it out, but a good pilot is going to manipulate his speed to be able to perform different maneuvers, and as a general rule, I always found that you should try and keep as much as your forward momentum as possible. Things like pulling up and braking will negatively affect affect your energy, so make sure to pay attention to the wind trails coming off of your wings to get a good understanding of how your plane is doing in terms of terminal velocity. Those who manage their velocity well are going to win their dogfights. Angling your planes correctly on turns and making quick and precise rolls are good things to practice. Breaking isn't always the solution either. One of the most common ways I and many other enemy pilots avoided attackers is by pulling up on the left stick and then pulling on the brake until your tail passes you. And when I was first learning to fly, this was my main course of defense as I didn't really know any better. I didn't know any maneuvers like a chandelle or a 90, but I quickly learned that if a decent pilot is tailing you, they are going to make you pay for doing this break repeatedly after you do it the first time. There are two things wrong with this. One, it leaves you in a horrible position post stall, and two, it's very easy for your attacker to loop around and attack again. It also leaves you vulnerable for a third party attack by another plane. However, with that being said, if you do recognize that your tail is following you at a very quick speed, stalling your plane, if done at the right time, is a good way to have your tail overshoot his lead and fly past you. 
but instead I would still utilize half S's, rolls, chandelles, 90s, and other maneuvers. One thing that you should keep in the back of your mind as well is the flight ceiling. Battlefield 5's flight ceiling is much shorter than in past titles, so it's very easy to reach the ceiling and then stall out, which obviously isn't good. It's actually what makes dogfighting in Battlefield 5 really not so good. So make sure that you aren't needlessly flying super high in case you need to make some maneuvers. Lastly, let's talk about specializations and the planes you should be using. In my opinion, you're going to want to select the upgrades and the planes to give you the most speed, maneuverability, and versatility, and allow you to have capabilities in both air-to-air -air combat and air-to-ground combat. So, you can follow these specialization trees if you wish. They are for the fastest plane in each type of faction, so you have the VA, the G2, and the Faster Zero and Corsair. My final tip and suggestion would be to watch some other pilots, as watching them really helps more than anything else. My personal recommendation would to be watch my pal Jive Turkey on Twitch. He is one of the best pilots in the world and is a really goofy, approachable, and easygoing streamer, so go and give him a follow and tell him I sent you. He normally streams early in the morning, so it's good for EU, but it's a little early for you US guys, so if you're a night owl, it's not going to be much of a difference, but if you're asleep during that time, you might just have to watch the VOD afterwards that's the end of the video ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it or learned something new drop a like on it share it around subscribe if you're new here turn on post notifications if you haven't done so already follow me on twitch twitter join my discord become a member if you're interested you can click the join button to find what benefits work for you and most importantly thank you all so much for watching my name is nick or catalyst and i will see you all another time